Hello, everyone. Welcome to another Mixed Tank Live. My name is Mark Abrams. I'm the content manager and uh, mentor over at PureMix.net. And we are here for another Mixed Tank Live. It happens every Monday, 2.30 p.m. Eastern. And on Mixed Tank, we're going to be reviewing mixes from the pro member mixing community, uh, PureMix. Um, a couple housekeeping things before we get started. We've got Black Friday on the horizon. If you are in the U.S., there is a very popular Turkey Day happening in a few days, and everybody knows that the day after that, once upon a time, the day after that only, is a great day for sales. And we have our infamous Black Friday sale starting on Friday. So if you're a cur current Pure Mix Pro member and you need to renew your membership, that's a great time to do it. If you're watching for the first time and you like what you see on the site, great time to do it as well. You get access to Mix Up. Um, which is our comment reviewing system that you can use to work with your team. If you put a mix up on there, people can drop their revision notes along the timeline. There's a plugin that goes in your DAW. You can snap to those comments and then upload new versions for everybody. Mix Tank, which is a part of puremix.net on the site, is a version of that where people can listen to your mixes and then drop comments for you that are just in the community, which is really cool. You also get access to all of the process.audio plugins. We just released a new one named Spice Rack. I talked about it last week on the Great Big Plugin Show, which airs every other Monday as well at the same time, 2.30 p.m. Eastern. But we went through and did a bunch of examples with Spice Rack, and it's an amazing creative distortion plugin. You also get Decibel, our amazing metering pl uh, plugin, which you can use in iPad or multiple iPads or Android devices or iOS devices, and you can have meters all around you. Uh, very distracting, but it's pretty cool if you want to make your studio look like the Starship uh, Enterprise, which is cool. As well as all of the amazing content on PureMix.net, of which we just added a chapter to the Michael Brower Browerize video, where he shows how to calibrate all of the dis different compressors for his A, B, C, D, E buses. And that'll help you guys get, get going with the plugin a little bit more, or with his uh, template a little bit more, I should say. Um, okay, so... Without further ado, let's get to some mixes. I'm rushing along here and, and stumbling over my words because I want to hear some music. So uh, this is Mix Up, if you've never seen it before. So over on the left, we have a bunch of submissions. These are all these cards here. And it tells the Pure Mix username and when they uploaded the song. And then in the center, we've got our player which has a timeline, and as people drop comments, you would see um, see those show up. So if I go to one with some comments on it, you can see there's little dots where people dropped, hold on, we're not ready yet, uh, where people drop comments for it. And then over on the right, we've got some information from the user, their username, their level, where they think the, the mix is at, and the track status area, as well as some comments from them explaining what the song is about. So as we are getting loaded up here in our countdown, we had some people in the live chat who let me know that they submitted mixes. And the way I've been trying to do this is uh, if you're taking the time out of your day to come into the live chat and be a part of it, I want to make sure I get to your song. So if you're here right now and you have a song up on Mix Tank, let me know your Pure Mix username and the song title, and we'll try to get to it before the end of the stream. To start off, I uh, believe Mike let me know of a song that he put up here. And I'm just going to find the name for that real quick. It is, let's see, Mike Ornsby, the song is called Six Feet Down. So I'm going to search over here for Six Feet Down. And here we go. It's from Studio Jaman. Uh, if you've seen a previous live stream, his songs are always amazing, and I really enjoy listening to his stuff. So let's dive in. Here we go. Crying all over you 
six feet down in the blue Now mama said to stay away I should have listened to her words Mama said to stay away I swear I should have listened to them words Now you've done gone and I'm all through I'm feeling six feet down in the blues Have mercy Yeah, Mike. Nice. Sounds great, man. Um, this is so different from some of the other stuff that you submitted, but it sounds amazing. I think it's in a really great place, actually. And uh, one of the fun things for me with songs that have been up here for a while is um, looking through the other comments while I'm listening. And uh, all of the stuff that I wrote down on my notepad um, is pretty much exactly what Tom said. I, um, I think you said uh, it's an early mix and the bass and drums seem muddy to you. So... Uh, I didn't feel that the bass and drums felt muddy, um, but I was thinking the same thing in the parallel compression uh, comment that Tom Foolery put up where he says, sometimes I'll add a parallel compressor to my kick and snare, like a DBX 160 style, and blend that into taste for a bit of extra punch. Um, your mileage may vary. Very, very diplomatic. Uh, I Same same thing, probably because we're both students of fab, uh, <laughs> do the same thing as well. And uh, that was the only thing I was thinking was like, I'm missing some of the transient punch from those things. Not a ton, um, but I'm missing a little bit of the transient punch from them. And I think that that, instead of looking for the parallel compression tricks to solve some of that, uh, Tom had a good point about things being super loud and clipping. Um, 
this feels like a very limited mix, and I think you might be losing some of that punch just from whatever's going on in the stereo bus with limiting and uh, just kind of stealing away some of your transient energy. So I would I would just look at that, and we're looking for like you know the the beater attack, the the pluck of the bass, the the crack of the snare, that kind of stuff. I feel like those transients are just being eaten up um, probably by a limiter, and I think if you reduce the volume of it. You have to watch and make sure that uh, if everything is pushing the limiter, you could feel the balance start to fall apart, obviously. But if um, if you can bring that down just a hair and just kind of just kind of work it down until you hear something you don't like and then, you know, stop touching it and go back to work on your individual balances uh, or on any of the extra transient punch. Or if it's still limiting too much, then I would just lose the limiter, fix the balance issues and, and see where you're at from there. Um, other than that, uh, other things that I wrote down, the um, the main guitar on the left uh, feels a little disconnected from the mix. I do like that it is out of the center of the mix and it's leaving room for the vocal and for everybody who likes to live in the center, you know, traditionally. Um, but it does feel a little bit far pan left where it feels a little disconnected from that. And if I'm imagining, you know, what is this performance? Um, likely singer you know is playing guitar and those guys need to feel more connected um not to like go to the super visual realistic image of them on stage but he wouldn't be playing his guitar over here kind of a thing um so i would consider just moving the guitar in a little bit closer to that vocal i usually for stuff like this where um uh rock stuff like guitar and a vocal happening together not necessarily singer songwriter but I'll take that rhythm guitar and I will move it and usually I'll move it to the left um, for whatever reason, uh, but I'll, I'll move it over um, in small increments. So I'll start with something like, you know, on the Pro Tools panner, it would be 12 or whatever, right? And then if I feel like that's not disconnected enough from the center, I'll go over to 25 and I'll just kind of like play with a, a bunch of different pan positions until I get something that feels like, yes, I've moved it out of the center. It's not competing with the vocal, but it's also not um, distracting to me that my main rhythm and harmonic content is happening so far away from the melody in the center of the vocal and the stereo field, if that makes sense. Uh, the only other uh, comments I had, the big one was relative tonal balances between the instruments. So at times, um, some things feel bright and other things feel dark, uh, but not they don't feel like they're within the same range of each other. So that rhythm guitar once in a while feels a little bright to me, but it also feels like it has, um, there's something on it that's causing a little crunchiness that doesn't sound like it came from a guitar amp or anything. That could also be a limiter thing. Potentially it's crunchy like that. Um, but I've also had that, that texture um, happened from like guitar compression pedals. So sometimes that could be baked in and then you just got to work around it. But once in a while, I would feel like that guitar was bright, but not all the time, which means that it was probably feeling bright in relation to something else feeling dark, if that makes sense. And that's something that um, can morph and change throughout a mix as different elements come in. You can have something that feels bright, but only because there was this dark guitar that happened for a moment. And then when that dark guitar is gone, everything feels balanced again. So I would just listen for like the different things that are coming in and out of the mix. Do they all feel like they're in the same, um, same realm or the same, you know, inside of the same tonal fence, if that makes sense, or the same palette, uh, unless you're doing things like that for effect, which is awesome. Uh, and totally should do that all the time. Um, but yeah, I think like the vocal feeling a little funny, um, there were a couple comments about it feeling a bit thin or flat. I think that's just related to how other things in the mix feel. Like if the guitar didn't feel as bright, the vocal wouldn't feel as thin, if that makes sense. Um, yeah. So the other, the other one that jumped out was there were some bright symbols on it. Um, I don't think there needs to be quite as much presence on the symbols, but it also, has a nice sheen over it so maybe just play with inching that down but not just getting rid of everything uh but overall i think this is great as far as the bass thing goes about the muddy bass i totally agree with tom i actually think that the bass sounds really good it's just eating a little bit of the kick drum um so and again i think that that's more of a transient thing than a, than an eq thing and i think overall this is amazing and I was even thinking at, at moments, I, I think that you could do a little bit of massaging on this mix, but I was even thinking like, 
you know, the right mastering job would even kind of put this in the right ballpark. The only other note I have is that the organ feels very, very wide to me at points. Um, not the whole time. There were just moments that I felt like this, but it felt like it was outside of the stereo field, like there was some widening going on. Um, for anybody who's seen the show before, I, I'm kind of a broken record about stereo widening, uh, I think, in very, very small increments. Uh, I use it too, but in very small increments. And if it's overdone, things start feeling phasey. They feel disorienting to me and um, just uh, doesn't have a great feeling to me. Usually that's caused from speakers. Um, I, don't, I don't think you have this issue, Mike, because I haven't heard this in your other, your other mixes, but that can be caused from having your speakers too close to each other. Um, you tend to overcompensate and overpan and uh, over stereo widen. Um, I know like uh, companies like Plugin Alliance have a stereo widener on almost all of their plugins, and it's very, very tempting to kind of do that because you do it and it feels cool at first, but then you go back to it and things can kind of become a phasey mess. Um, but that said, I do appreciate that they have it on their plugins because I use it sometimes too. Just uh, watch out for phase issues. But again, I didn't feel it the whole time, just once in a while. So I hope that that helps. Uh, let's see what else we got in the chat here. Let me scroll down from the top. Okay, it looks like our next one is from Gabrielle Solange. Awesome. Um, so Gabrielle's a friend of mine, full disclosure. Uh, but she is also a Pure Mix member, and she submitted a song. She is Slavix. I think that's the proper pronunciation. No, you put the pronunciation. It's Phoenix right next to it. Okay, so let's look for Phoenix over here. Let's see what we got. Not coming up for that. Oh, right, because that's the pronunciation. I have to actually type it out. So 7HO3, Nix. Got it. What it is. Awesome. Okay, sweet. Um, I already know I'm in for a treat because I know who Gabrielle is. Uh, all right, let's go from the top here. I could probably talk about that for hours, but I'll just go from the top. Here we go. Pay my bills 
Awesome. Great, great song. Awesome job. Um, Swachnix. That's me pronouncing your username. Um, no, I know that your name is Gabrielle, so, or Gabby, as I call you. Um, so, Gabby, amazing job as always. Uh, I, I know Gabby, um, and she is, as you just heard, an amazing singer. Everybody should go check her out. Her Instagram's on the screen there, I believe. If you guys can't read it because it's all fuzzy, um, Gab's whole story is her Instagram. Um, so, and also if you guys can't read that text, it says, uh, in the comments for the track over on the right, it says, I applied some of your guys' feedback and this is an updated version. Thank you so much. Please let me know what you think of this mix. I'm also the one singer, songwriter, and creator of this beat. It's about moving forward and growing from mistakes, heartbreak, and grief. And then her Instagram. Um, and, uh, in the comments after Laban put his comment he said very good would like some more low end to the kick in the genre in my opinion hope it helps uh she says okay thanks i'll see about that the drum loop is a sample with all the sounds included so i'm not able to separate that specific sound so um this is something that happens in productions a lot where uh you work off of a loop or a beat and you can't pull anything apart because it's all, it's one track, it's one audio file. And I get a ton of stuff to mix, mostly in the hip hop realm where I just get a two track instrumental and I, you know, I have no control over what's going on in the instrumental. I just basically am doing a vocal mix on top of a beat. Um, some people call that karaoke uh, in certain circles, but um, when you are limited by that, there's a number of tricks that you can still do to kind of find separation and, and do, do different things to kind of make vocals fit inside of it and they're it's a lot more tricky but it's still possible um they're like what Laban was saying about some more low end in the kick um in that sample i don't hear a lot of other stuff happening in the bottom in the sub range and you could probably get some beef by um just boosting some some lower stuff you have to be careful because if you go too far it can end up getting muddy and um on an eq uh, you mentioned at one point that, uh, I think after Sonic Science Labs comments that, um, you don't know all the mixing engineer lingo. So one thing that would help, um, if you are working on a beat like this and you have an EQ pulled up, if you adjust the bandwidth of it, which would be the Q control on it, you can make the band of EQ that you're pushing. It never just pushes one frequency. It pushes a group around it. So the Q decides how wide that boost will be. So if you're boosting with a very narrow Q, it would look something like this on your EQ. And if you're doing a wide thing, a wide bell would look something more like that. So I would move down into the bottom and see if you can find a point where boosting a little bit with a tight Q um, starts to give you some meat to that drum that doesn't feel unnatural. And then I would try widening it out until it starts to feel like it's getting muddy and then maybe tighten back a little bit, but just kind of play with that and then give it a little bit of a boost for some more bottom end. Um, 
However, that leads to another another comment, which is um, that uh, some of the comments in here were that the vocals feel a little thin, like they don't have a lot of body around them. Um, that would be true for me in the lead vocals. The background vocals are the opposite of that, which we'll touch on those in a second. But on the lead vocals, um, if you're not, if you're cutting a lot of mid range to kind of get the shiny pop singer thing. Uh, a lot of low mid range to get the shiny pop singer thing, it can end up going too far and you end up with a vocal that's a bit slanted. I don't know if I'm left or right, but um, it can end up being a little bit slanted and, and too shiny. And then as it gets too shiny, it becomes too sibilant and it starts to kind of poke out and, and kind of nail you in the ear a little bit. Uh, I think the word that Sonic uses was uh, whizzy, um, which just like S is kind of popping out and uh, the vocal range kind of spiking your ear a little bit or the, the upper mids. Um, uh, there's some great comments going down in the chat right now about Isotope. Um, they have a plugin that does something called stem splitting, which, uh, um, a video coming very soon with Michael Brower touches on this technique where he only had a two track of, um, little spoiler alert of some Aerosmith basement tapes, like some old rehearsal tapes, and they wanted to re-release those, but they wanted them to sound better. So he had to go through and try to make stems of the drums, bass, guitars, and vocals all from this stereo two-track of a basement recording, um, which he did to great success with uh, that tool from Isotope. If you guys remember the name of it, put it in the chat for me, um, of the actual Isotope plugin, uh, but it, it's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, that's uh, sort of the first comment is um, the monitoring that you're using is going to be greatly dependent on whether or not you're hearing the bottom end of the track. Uh, one thing that um, strikes me as, as odd in the mix and makes me question monitoring is those low end background vocals. So those guys feel like they are uh, very, very heavy uh heavy in the low mids and they are doing what we call masking um where there's so much of one frequency range that it is exceeding the range of other instruments and it ends up basically putting a mask over top of those and making it so that we can't hear them as well so in the very bottom of the vocal there's some like almost like what you would get with proximity effect if you imagine being really close on an sm 58 and it kind of does like one of these where i can feel good at some points and it feels like it's getting bigger um but it's masking some other stuff that's going on in the in the spectrum because it's becoming really boomy in that area so on the background vocals i would try looking at around two 200 220 somewhere in there with an eq and ducking out some of the the buildup that's happening in the low mids of the vocal um to just balance them it's not to make them thin but just to to balance them we're not trying to take all the body out of your voice but just just kind of give it a little bit more balance and get the masking gone so that we can hear the other elements. Um, back to the beat thing, uh, there were some comments in here too about some of the different um, elements of the mix feeling over compressed. So you're dealing with um, a loop that has other instruments inside of it. It's difficult to break those out and enhance them. And uh, the compression thing might be if it's nothing that you've done to the sample and it sounds like it's in that anyway, um, sometimes you can use an expander to try and increase the dynamic range of that. Uh, it's a little tricky at points. I wanted to point out one thing that um, for artists that create with uh, loop-based um, productions, uh, there is a company called Output and uh, an instrument from them called Arcade that is pretty rad and i'm pulling up the website here um you guys can check it out it's just output.com and then look for arcade but they basically have um loops where you have an entire library almost like when you're browsing it it's almost like spotify like you type in i'm looking for vocal uh things or keyboards or drums or whatever and it'll load up uh, an instrument that looks like the ones uh on the page here but it maps all these different loops out onto your keyboard. And then you can create different variations of those loops. Um, there's a whole lot that you can do without really um, being a keyboard player. Uh, but if you create with loops and all of that, this is one of the coolest tools that I've found um, for doing that. And I think that the way it works, they have, they have like a trial thing, but I think it's a subscription-based thing i don't think it's like a um expensive instrument or anything but anyway yeah for for loop based creators this is one of the 
coolest ways to add some like personality and um, be able to quickly build instrumentals without being able to, you know, being a virtuoso on the keyboard or anything like that. Uh, so I'd, I'd say check this out as well. And the reason I point that out is if you're dealing with things in a loop, um, say you pull in like an Apple loop to create your song and you go through and you write a song and you love your song, but the loop is giving you problems. You wrote a great song with that loop and inspired you. It's, it's served its purpose. So you can either enhance that loop by adding more production to it, or you can replace it and rebuild it. Um, the, whole, the whole purpose was for you to write a song. If you got that out of the loop, then you can move on from it. Uh, if you don't want to do all that, then you don't have to, and you can uh, search for ways to just kind of improve the loop. Uh, let me see what else I had here. Um, mouth noises. So I wanted to talk about mouth noise on the vocal uh another tool that helps you clean up all that stuff again from isotope um is mouth d click and uh basically that plugin on default will go through and wipe out any of the like lip smacks or um clicking uh kind of stuff little like you know um any any like tongue noises all of that thing it'll just clean all that stuff out and that helps the vocal to be less distracting in my opinion. So the whole, like when we're making a song, it's, you know, it's somewhat similar to a movie where you're trying to suspend disbelief and just make the listener forget that they're listening to a recording. They're just, we're trying to take them someplace and little things like lip smacks that kind of pop out of the mix can, can really pull you out of that even in a subconscious way and just kind of lock you back in. Um, so, I really liked uh, some of the vocal stuff that was happening effects wise, especially right here. That reverb tail I think is awesome. And I was thinking if you ended the song with that tail bleeding out, that would be awesome. Uh, which leads me to that you repeat that vocal phrase and then at the end the song cuts off so just watch the tail of your song so that it doesn't get doesn't get chopped and make sure that all of your reverb tails have completely finished by the time that you put in the end of your bounce selection uh let's see dun, dun, dun. rx music balance is the name of that plugin i was thinking about um martin says golfos seems to be an interesting plugin golfos is awesome uh we'll have to talk about that on a plugin show it's a really good one um, golf us on the drum loop could help clean things up. Yeah, I think that that might be cool. Um, Isomatic said that. So golf us is from a company called Sound Theory, and uh, the idea is that it's it's listening to the input material and then making predictions and uh, suggestions based on what it thinks a balanced spectrum is, um, and then you can kind of tweak it to make things all match up. Uh, we'll talk about that someday on a on a plugin show as well. So okay. Um, Bottom line, though, the freaking vocal performance. Oh, my God. Gabby, it's awesome. Uh, I think there's a lot of really, really great stuff here going on, and uh, I hope that it helps. And uh, you have my number, so call me if it doesn't and yell at me. <laughs> so, Okay. Um, at some point, you guys got to let me know if you think this would be cool. I was thinking about um, integrating like live phone calls to, to the live streams where you guys, like there will be a call-in number, and then you can come on here and be like, No! No, that, that snare, it's not cracking enough. More more crack on the snare. Who's this guy? I think that'd be pretty awesome. Okay. Um, sweet. Let's see. Isomatic, are you from Columbus, Ohio? That would be amazing. Oh, Mega Fantastic says he uses output on samples as well. Or no, he uses uh, something else on samples. All right. Let's move on to another song because um, I could talk about Gabby's music for the whole stream and then everybody will be mad at me okay let's see smoking fudo thanks for being here again um let's check yours out in this moment i'm gonna come back i'm just gonna go to the top here and try to work my way down the line let's see here who's gonna be our next person okay west nile awesome wes this is shot me alive here we go I'm going to turn on HD for HD resolution. Here we go. It's 
Taught me how to handle my temper. Used to throw shot after shot. You calming down when I'm tripping. I remember nights we used to shoot it out. I was scared that you would leave, so I kept you around. Showcases next to my demons. The old me's dead, and you're the reason. Your love hit me like a 45. <laughs> Against the world, you my ride or die. That forever type of feeling when I look in your eyes Them mother couples couldn't have made it through the things we survived Skeletons deep in your closet, loving me, force you to show them. I was so numb and so broke, feeling alone and just over. Somewhere out there was my equal, faders would let me to meet you. People use love as a weapon, ducking and dodging the bullets. I saw your 19 and let it, grabbed it and begged you to pull it. Trusted and gave you a shot. Hit me with all that you got. <laughs> Baby, I know all the right spot. Your love hit me like a 45. <laughs> Against the world, you my ride right or die. That for every time of feeling when I look in your eyes Them mother couples couldn't have made it through the things we survived Your time with all those lies, we don't give up, we don't give up. They're gonna talk about us when we're long gone. Saying I want what they had, replaying these love songs. Sing it, baby. Your love hit me like a 45. <laughs> Against the world, you might ride or die. Don't stop. When you need me, boy, I'm showing up. Knock, knock. You deserve perfect, and I know I'm not. Get that forever time. The couples couldn't have made it through the things we survived. I'm your body, I'm your class. I'm by your side. Your love hit me like a 45. You shot me alive. Awesome, Wes. Great job. Um, I hear a couple things. Uh, I want to go back to the bridge here. You shot me up. Don't waste your time. Okay, um, so a couple things. So I read through your comments over on the right. So it says, I'm having trouble getting the drums to transition from electronic on the verse to acoustic on the hook. We'll talk about that in a second. Also having a hell of a time getting the bass guitar right. It's all there. Just something about the overall mix but is bugging me and I can't put my finger on it. It might be that I've just been working on it for too long. Uh, any advice? Welcome. Lay it on me. Uh, levels raised and a light bus comp for listening purposes but no mastering. Okay. Um, so... Uh, trying to think where to start here. The let's talk about that last sentence. So uh, level raised in a light bus comp for listening purposes. Um, so applying a bus compressor for listening purposes, uh, that one sticks out to me a little bit, um, just as a general comment. Uh, and I think some of the stuff I'm hearing in here has to do with this too. But uh, usually with a bus compressor, I recommend mixing into it. So the you know kind of a stair stepping process that i'll go through in the mix is i'll um i'll kind of get a rough balance going and then i'll bring in my two bus processing this is different for everybody but i'll bring in my two bus processing as early as possible uh so once i have a general balance going i'll bring in all of that stuff and i'll kind of make sure that the compressor is hitting right where i want it to be and all of that um but i'm mixing into that for the rest of the mix and because the stereo bus compressor is always going to be changing my balances. It's going to be affecting my transients. Um, it could potentially be burying things down in the mix as I'm pushing a fader up. If it's not set properly, it could be, you know, wreaking all kinds of havoc. So I would never apply a light bus compression at the end for listening purposes because that would be lying to you anyway. If you were taking it out to your car to go listen to it or sending it off to the artist, um, but you were going to remove all that later... Uh, the bus compressor, I feel like, has such an effect on the overall 
um, result of the mix that if you if you put that on there just to go listen, it's it's telling you a lie anyway. Uh, so that's all on that. Um, the the biggest thing to me in this song is that the drums are too loud. And uh, just looking at some other comments that you put on here, um, so Laban said he thought that the female vocal had too much top end. Um, and then he, uh, yeah, Wes goes back and says, I'm, I'm running into the, um, you just listened to mix number 900. Uh, thanks for the feedback. So if you're on mix number 900, there's a perspective thing happening here. And this is a hard one. It's, it's really hard. You know, your, your work ethic is, is fantastic and you're like pushing through to get it. But at some point you lose perspective on it and you get lost completely in the weeds where you're listening to something like, um, I mean, even the, the electronic transition, uh, the drum transition from electronic to acoustic and the, the hook, I don't think that that's necessarily where the focus needs to be in, in this mix right now, but that's probably where you're at in terms of like, I'm on mix number 900, I'm, I'm buried in this thing and I'm just trying to like figure out these things and that's the thing that's bugging me on mix number 899 or something like that. So um, point being to that, if you have the ability to do so, meaning like you don't have a client that's waiting for a release date and um, all of the other pressures that push deadlines and all that, if you can put this away, don't listen to it at least for a day. Uh, if you can, and you're on it, you really are on like mix number, you know, 90 or something like that. Realistic. Um, put it away for a week, you know, and, and don't listen to it. Don't even like out of curiosity, go listen to it. And then the next time you sit down at your desk, load it up. Uh, I do this all the time where like, I'll load the mix up in quick time. I won't even open pro tools or whatever DAW. Um, and I'll turn my screen off and I'll hit the space bar to hit play. And I'll just listen with a pad of paper next to me. And I'll just start writing everything that I think, uh, I'm not looking for anything. I'm just trying to listen passively, not pay attention to it. Uh, I mean, pay attention to it, but I'm listening as a listener, not, not as a mixing engineer. And then if something makes me stop listening as a listener, I'll write that down. And that's a mixed note. That's the thing I have to go look like, Oh man, vocal came out first first verse end of first first one or whatever and i'll go back and hit that um but yeah if you're so far in the weeds that's you need some space from it uh but the big thing to me was that the drums are too loud in there and then there's some vocal resonances um we'll just talk about the drums being too loud for a second so the reason that i went back to the bridge which i think is right here listen to the interaction between the vocals and the drums on the fill as they enter the bridge so here we go So to me, I, throughout the song, really, the, the drums are probably the star of the show. And this is something I like see all the time in uh, a lot of like, um, I was going to say local, but just like younger mixers is like, as mixing engineers, if, if you're approaching it as a mixing engineer, drums are like, drums are the fun thing for us. Drums are where we get to like pull out of our compressors. We get to pull out distortions and we're slamming things. And oh man, I need like the newest Neve channel strip thing. Cause that's going to saturate my transients and that's going to be amazing. And then like, if I put the 33609 on the drum parallel, it's going to be awesome and all of that stuff. And none of it matters for the song. So, um, this, this is something that I hear a ton. It's just, just like trying to get the most impressive drum sound and then everything else um, either doesn't get the same attention, not saying that's happening here, but either thing doesn't get the same attention or they're just lower in the mix and the emphasis isn't there. So you hear things like amazing sounding tom fills and drum rooms and all of that, but then you go to listen to the vocal and you're like straining to, to find it or even just the harmonic structure of the song where you're like, which element is holding down the chord progression? And I feel a little bit of that... Um, you know, if we find a chorus here, let's just listen to a chorus uh, after I've made my um, comment here. So what I hear in that, um, first, I actually, I want to backtrack a little bit and just tell you, like, I think the production on this is amazing. So if you're involved in all of that, like, great job i think you hit all the notes for for the style and for the song and it's really cool uh but listening to that chorus what i heard was the drums are very loud 
We'll talk about the balance of the drums in a second, but the main guitar is in the center. That's providing our chord, um, our chord progression, our basic harmonic structure, and it feels very mono and uh, very low in the mix and a little bit washed out like there's reverb on it. Um, so I think that in this style, I would probably be doing, you know, if you don't have a double of the guitar, finding a way to widen that guitar a little bit or at least panning it off to one side. Um, and if you are the producer and you can, you know, add some elements like a guitar, same performance, um, not a duplicated track and sliding it around, that doesn't work, but I won't talk about that right now because I don't know that you would do that. But a double performance panned left and right uh, is going to make a wall around the sides that's going to feel really awesome. And it'll provide the harmonic structure that um, I feel like I'm missing in this. So uh, one more time on that listen. There's also in the drum programming, um, I think it's right around here. Listen to the snare. There's a, a different sounding snare hit and it happens over on the left. Uh, I think it's just a velocity thing plus the combination of room mics and compression. It's like a ghost note that sounds almost like a missed, missed uh, stick click. So um, there's a little bit of a realism problem in the programming of the drums too. And then the drum room compression stuff that's happening, I, I feel like it's pulling all the samples away from each other. So it doesn't feel like a cohesive kit, but it feels like a very loud uncohesive kit. And then the um, sort of missing of the, uh, the chord progression and harmonic structure in there, um, I, I think like balances could be worked on a little bit, I guess is the way to put that. And let's see, other than that, oh, vocal resonances. So uh, to touch on that really quick, every once in a while, there's um, some frequencies that are kind of popping out in the vocals in, I heard stuff in both the male and the female vocal. That's usually a result of over compression on the vocals. For this style, I totally get where you're going with that and going to get it. And I think that that's awesome. I would consider following that compressor with either some cleanup EQ um, or uh, Soothe is a great plugin that can help solve all of this stuff. Uh, I've talked in the past before about solving a temporary problem with a permanent solution. And Soothe is a permanent solution, right? I mean, it acts in a temporary way. Or sorry, Soothe, Soothe it's a little bit of a temporary situation. If you go in with an EQ on the vocal and you have like one spot where the vocal blooms at say like 250 or something uh, and you dip out a bunch of 250 and you don't automate that band and you just leave it on for the entire song, you can end up making the vocal sound thin in other places. So what I mean by temporary solution would be um, go in to the point where the vocal's booming up a little bit, automate a band of EQ, listen to it, and once the problem's fixed, bypass that band on the EQ. You can do this in every DAW where you just like bring in a band of EQ just for that moment to, to solve your problem and then move on and don't worry about it. Um, just because you hear little resonances happen once in a while doesn't mean that the vocal is, you know, too sibilant or too bassy for the entire song. It could just be those moments. Soothe is a plugin that responds. It's basically just um, a ton of bands of dynamic EQ that has a preset, you know, balance that it thinks that things should be. And then you can kind of tweak that balance as, as you see fit, but it is then always on your track. Um, and I prefer to do things the long way, I guess, of <laughs> just like automating a band in and out because I feel like I don't end up with Swiss cheese on my vocals, uh, where like there's just holes in it all the time because it's always reacting. Um, but I have gotten great results with Soothe as well. So that would be something to look at. Uh, I think that, all of the pieces are here, as you said, and it's just a matter of getting some distance from the mix. Um, and I know what it's like to get to mix number 900. I, like, I know that feeling, and it's, it's not a fun place. So if you can go from scratch, like take a break from this, and then go back to square one, and just put the faders up and get a balance, and then try to add some of the excitement on top of it from there, um, I think you'd find that this would actually be a fast mix too, again, because the pieces are there. Uh, so I hope that that helps and I hope that you, um, don't have to do another hundred mixes or anything like that. And that this is useful, Wes, uh, again, very cool track. And I think it's going to be awesome. If you do another version, please post it. We'll be back here in two weeks and I'd love to hear it again. All right. 
on to the next one. Let me find here. Isomatic, you're in Columbus, Ohio. We have to talk. Find me on Instagram. I am also in Columbus, Ohio. Okay, uh, let's see here. Primetime, uh, hi Mark, made a mix of the Paris Monster song. It's a sugar and spice mix. Okay, Primetime, thanks for coming again. Good to see you. Let's see, Primetime, sugar and spice mix. Does that mean that you used only sugar and uh, spice rack on this? Okay, so he says, last week at the Big Plug-In Show, I asked Mark if a mix could be made with just sugar. Oh man, you did it. This mix actually already existed and the stems are on the process. Oh, okay. Uh, song gives me goosebumps. Downloaded the stems. Went to listen to another song by Paris Monster. And okay, uh, you guys, I don't know if you can read that from the scrunchy text, but um, basically you just did a mix with sugar and spice rack. Let's check it out. Here we go. Over the hill, true. Over the hill, because in our society, 89, 89, I've examined the truth. I just just got to pause to point out um, Paris Monster, as as Primetime put in the description here, they've been on Pure Mix live streams before, and you guys should totally go look that up on YouTube um, after this and just look for Paris Monster Pure Mix. But I want to point out that that amazing freaking groove that's happening right now on the drums is from the singer who's singing, playing guitar, and playing a, a, a synth on the right. So he's, you know, one hand doing the backbeat, one hand on a synth, also singing at the same time, and his voice sounds like that. So, here we go. I doubt it, child. Oh, stone, oh, stone, I had it so high. She climbed, clutched and trembled. Tainted a lonely wine on the filthy brace. Back in the stone, time is on the jump. All right, Prime Time. Cool. I like the ending that you did. That's awesome. Nice. Okay. Um, I know I, I haven't looked at these stems in a long time, but I, I remember the stems, and um, I think I remember there being some more stereo options in there. The The mix feels very mono to me overall, which is actually a cool vibe for it because uh, you have that 
modular um, sequenced pattern that's happening in stereo, and then you kind of have everything in the mono thing, which is kind of neat. Um, but I feel like I'm missing a little bit of overhead uh, and a little bit of brightness overall. Um, but you did this with sugar and spice rack only. So I would go to the kick drum first on this, and I would say like things feel a little bit heavy in the low mids. And with spice rack, you have the linear phase EQ. Um, so if you were just trying to do this exercise of only using sugar and spice rack, which I don't recommend, but, um, you could, uh, I mean, of course, you know, yeah, you could do stuff, but, um, yeah, with the linear phase EQ, I'd just like ducking some low mids on the kick drum and probably the snare as well. Cause it sounds like they're both kind of getting up in the, in the range there. Um, I don't think that the bass is necessarily too loud. I think everything else is too dark. And, um, that just brings up a, a really cool point about, um, sometimes volume is not, not what it, not what we think is the problem. Right. So, uh, if something sounds, you know, if I get, I'm trying to think of how to phrase this, sorry. If I get a mixed revision comment from a client and they say the vocal's too loud or the snare's too loud, actually is a better one. They say that the snare is too loud. Sometimes like to me, uh, the way that my brain interprets that is the snare is in front of something else that the person wants to hear more. And it's either a volume in, uh, issue or it's a frequency balance issue. And a lot of times for snare, if you get the comment that the snare is too loud, but the snare feels good where it is, and uh, you know it, it's it's kind of where you think. Sometimes just taking down some of the presence of the snare will allow the brighter vocal to step in front of it and and feel like they're a little bit more balanced together. Whereas if you just bring the fader down, you might be losing some of the excitement of having the snare where it was and all of that. So uh, hopefully that makes sense. But I think that the frequency relationship between the instruments is probably what's causing uh, Laban's comment about the bass is too loud. I would be interested to see what would happen if you cleaned up the low mids, um, probably in all the kick, the snare, the bass, um, and just see where the balance is at that point. Obviously, you're changing gain and you are changing volume to some degree because you're, if you're cutting or boosting other things, balances are going to change. But um, yeah, interesting. I, I think that this mix is really, really cool. You did a, another cool reverb thing in, in one of those moments, but um, awesome. Yeah, uh, what a cool experiment. And thanks for thanks for doing this and submitting, Prime Time. This is so cool. Uh, very honest, I've also used other plugins, but the plugin template from, or the logic template from Fab. Nice. Yeah, that's awesome. Very cool. Yeah, I think the low mids would be the thing to check out on this one. Um, but yeah, great great job, Primetime. Um, yeah, obviously, we don't, there's no reverb in Sugar or Spice Rack. Um, so uh, something was in there, but cool. Very nice. I'm sure uh, Tom Fillory will be around here to comment on this one too, which would be awesome. So, all right, let's hit another one from the chat here. Let me go up. Guys, if I haven't hit yours yet, and uh, don't let me lose you in the chat, feel free to, to put your username in the song in again. Nobody will judge you for it. Just just spam it. Spam the heck out of the freaking chat. Uh, all right, Driving Cadillac, username Gord. Let's hit that one. Here we go. All right. Gord, yes. Awesome. Excited to hear this. Okay, on this version, I've hopefully fixed the voice. Okay, so I think this is a song that we've heard on Mixed Tank before, so I'm excited to hear this. On this version, I've hopefully fixed the voice distortion. I put parallel compression on the kick, brought the bass up. Uh, oh, nice. In Logic, the Steinway piano is out of phase and was disappearing in mono, so I switched to the Yamaha. Uh, I'm also playing with the Ocean Way Studios plugin on some tracks, piano, vocal, snare, hat, and guitar. Mind you, I didn't read the instructions. Never RTFM. Never. <laughs> All right, let's do it. From the top. Driving Cadillac from Gord. You get back here with my car! Oh, oh, see you later, baby. Yeah. Let's go. Driving down the road in a Cadillac. Driving so fast, you know I can't look back. I don't know when 
her shack And I drove away in her Cadillac Oh yeah, let's go Come back, little baby Goodbye, little baby Come back with my car Baby can move my mind Come back with my car Come back with my car You get back here with my car Awesome. Great job, Gord. This is super cool. Uh, as always from you. Yeah. Awesome. So, uh, yeah. So balances are, are probably the biggest thing I hear. And in this one particular, it's the balance of the vocals to the rest of the instruments. Uh, so reason for this is not, it's not a mixed thing. It's a, um, this is a song with a story and I want to hear the story and I feel like I have to strain and lean in to get to the words of it and understand uh, what the lyrics are, what's going on in the story and all that. The reason I feel that they're buried is I think that they probably could come up a little in volume, but um, there's also just what I was talking about a minute ago with the, the relative uh, tonal balance of instruments to each other. The vocals feel darker to me, and I, I saw you had a comment about trying to fix some uh, vocal distortion. So it could be that you've um, reduced the presence of those by doing some cleanup work. I don't know, but um, the vocals sound darker to me than, say, the the rhythm guitar that's happening on my left right here. Um, that feels a little bit brighter than the vocals, and it's sitting in front. Uh, and as well as the piano over on the right, which sounds really cool, by the way, I wouldn't have like necessarily picked up that was a sample. Um, uh, that guy is cooking and like playing his butt off the entire time, the entire song, which is really, really cool. But he's always in this, it sounded like it was always in a static volume. And I think the piano balance wise, the piano probably needs to come back a little bit, especially when the singers are like really delivering lines. Um, and then you could automate him back up on the solo stuff where those sections where it's featured. Um, that was, that was sort of like the piano balancing I heard, but yeah, the, the big one for me is like the vocals feel quiet and a little bit darker than some of the other elements. Um, had a little bit of automation to it. If, uh, if you have any kind of physical faders, that really, really helps to breathe life into a mix like this. Like just getting your hands on the faders, throwing things into touch mode and then pushing up the solos and pulling things back and, and all of that. Um, there's a performance to it that really helps versus like having to click and set a fader volume with the mouse and hold it and write automation and all that. Uh, so I would consider just doing a little bit more automation on it. Uh, the harmony on Goodbye Little Baby the male harmony um i was i heard the harmony in there uh but i was like do i hear the harmony and then i had to like, kind of lean in to hear it and i thought it was a great harmony that could probably come up as well um when the two vocals are happening simultaneously i would consider trying and it might fail um but doing a light pan between the male and the female and just getting them both out of the center and off of the top of each other so that they just kind of go like this i think that that would add some um some diction to the words like we'd be able to understand the intelligibility would go up in in the lyrics that they're saying while they're duetting if you will uh since they are different words um uh, but yeah great job gord i think this is awesome uh as always you always have really cool songs on here okay uh our next one thank you for submitting that our next one is from mje 13 let's go find it this is road rock driving rock instrumental version six and uh, I will read your comments as I'm listening. Here we go.
Okay. Uh, awesome, man. Thank you for submitting this. Uh, I'm going to point out something I heard right at the end there while we're here. So let's just listen to the guitar at the very end one more time. Okay, so the uh, guitar pick and the, the actual like picking transient of this guitar is way, way louder than the sustained portion of the signal. And that's usually from being over compressed with a slow attack. So the, um, not a super slow attack, but a pretty slow attack. Um, yeah, not a fast enough attack. So uh, basically the transient, the pick is escaping the compressor and then the compressor is going poof on the rest of the signal. Um, technical term, but let's listen to it one more time. So uh, I would just take a look at that. The transients are are kind of poking out of the signal. Um, the other part is if we listen to the stereo width on this. There's some phase issues going on. Uh, it could be stereo widening stuff, but um, that's a big one. And uh, let's see. I didn't get through all of the notes on it um, or the other comments. The uh, Let's go back to the beginning here and just listen to a little bit more from the top. I'm going to listen through about here, and then we'll have more comments. Here we go. Okay, um, yeah, so going back to my last comment about drums being too loud sometimes, I think that there's a balancing happening here with the drums, but I think I just put my finger on what it is that's getting me, and that's um, the guitar sound that's happening. There's a stereo spread effect happening on it, but it doesn't sound... Um, it doesn't sound necessarily like imaging. It almost sounds like you duplicated the track and then slid it a little bit, because I feel like there's a little bit of comb filtering in there, but I could be totally wrong. Uh, so just a note about that section that I just played, um, when you want the wide guitar sound, the fastest way to that is to do an authentic double of it. So you play it down the best you can one time and then change guitars, change the settings on your pedals, change amps, still get a great sound that's in the same vein, but a different thing, change as much as you can and then do a double of that guitar. And because of the differences in it, uh, and the micro differences that you'll make when you're, you know, performing it, even the best players in the world couldn't do a perfect double that would phase out of each other. Um, at least, well, I can't say that for certain, maybe somebody has, but it'd be a really nerdy experiment and they should go make more songs instead of doing that. But anyway, um, yeah, change as many things, do it a, a double pan those guys out. It's going to feel like a thick, uh, bed of guitars. And right now the guitars are sitting behind the drums. I feel like if you fix what you're doing with the stereo widening of that guitar, it's going to help to push those guitars out, be like meatier and up there with the drums. So I would start there. That was one of the big things. And then you want to find out um, on the intro, bass intro and break section. Um, let's just take a listen to this break section again. Some of the same stuff on the on the um, guitar solo portion that's happening there. I feel a little bit of that weird uh, stereo thing happening too. And let's just... a little bit of clacking coming from the bass could be the same thing uh, where that upper mid range of the bass is escaping, but it's not a, not a huge deal. Um, the only other thing I would say on the break section is just watch out for the programming and the performance, the timing of things. Some of it felt a little bit loose to me, which in this style, I think that things have to be pretty tight and, and nailing it together. Uh, a lot of it's like those really cool syncopations that happen in, in the style of music and, 
everybody being tight is what makes those things powerful. So maybe just a little bit more editing and tightening of performances, but uh, very cool track and thank you for submitting it. Um, I think that Tom's, Tom's advice here is really great. Uh, I think the phasey stuff that Sonic Science is talking about is in relation to the doubling thing, like what I was saying. Um, and I hope that that helps. Uh, if you need any more insight on this, uh, it says that you're submitting it tomorrow. I'm not sure what for, but if you need faster feedback, uh, try shooting me an email at marketpeermix.net and I'll try to get back to you if I can. A uh, little busy day, but we'll try. Okay, uh, let's see what else we got here. We did Driving Cadillac. We got MJE. Uh, let's see, Wild Ones. Um, smoking Fudo. Did we hear that already? Let's see. Smoking. Welcome back, Smoking. Okay, Wild Ones Revision 2. I don't think I hit this yet. Let's try it. Here we go. Open up your heart Open up your mind And don't let them keep you trapped inside and They'll never understand The way that you raise your hand and They'll never know just who you are So keep your head I, I'm just going to point out something to listen to on this chorus here, and then we'll come back and talk about it in a minute. But I want you to listen to the distance between the snare drum, the acoustic guitar, and the electric guitar line. And uh, I mean distance in terms of like, where are they in space? Are they close to you? Are they a little further back? Is one in front of the other? Is one hanging out back here? Let's check it out. Kiss the ones you love And dance like you're really having fun And don't be afraid to fall And go out and risk it all And don't be afraid of who you are Love the feel of the guitar here. Okay, as we go through this section, let's listen to the balance of instruments, um, the ones that are telling the song uh, and the ones that are rhythmic, and uh, which ones support um, support the main, you know, if you broke the sound on, or, yeah, if you broke the song down to its core elements, what would you have left? And then let's listen to the balance that we have here.
right I know where you're coming from Don't be afraid Go ahead and fall in love Run with the wild ones It's so much you haven't done It's not too late It's interesting, at the end, I uh, hear a reverb that I hadn't really heard the rest of the song. Maybe you automated that in, but um, there's a tail that pops up after a line. I think it's over here. Let's take a listen. Go ahead and fall in love Run with the wild old ones It's so much you haven't done Yeah, especially after the word done. So much you haven't done it's not too late. Doesn't sound like pre-delay. It sounds like a compressor on the reverb that's um, ducking the reverb until the vocal's gone and then releasing it, uh, which is a cool effect, and I use that a lot to clean up vocals. Um, this vocal feels dry to me throughout the mix, and if maybe that's what's going on, is that it's just being ducked all the time. Uh, so, yeah, it feels a little too unnatural there for me, but anyway... Um, Back through the rest of the song, I do feel like the vocal's a little dry. Uh, going back to some of the other stuff, though, and, and some of the things I talked about, uh, let's talk about the first comment, which was like, balance between instruments, who's close, who's far. I hear a very, very close snare drum. It's it's close to me, um, and the lead vocal is very close to me and very dry. But then I hear this guitar that's playing the main counter melody that's happening in the distance uh, way down the hallway or down you know the arena or whatever. Um, but it's... You can have reverb be affected guitars like that without them feeling like they're a hundred yards away too. And it's I wanted to listen to that, but the contrast of the very dry vocal and then that guitar made me feel one like the mix is very deep, which I love all the time. Um, but I wanted to hear that thing as a main element a little bit closer to me. And a lot of that stuff just has to do with um, asking yourself the question of like, who are the main players here right now? What do I need to hear? What's the song about? How do I get emotion from the song? Um, not from any of the tricks that we have at our disposal in a plugin or whatever. It's It all comes back down to what is the song? Are we telling a story with it? If we're telling a story with it, who tells the story out of all of the tracks and all the faders that I have to work with? Who are Which, which of these faders help me tell the story? Is it the vocal and the acoustic guitar? If those guys are the main storytellers, um, they need to be given that prominence uh unless you're doing something artistic is art you know there's no boundary or no rules but um those are the guys that need to be at the forefront telling us the story all the time need to be able to hear them without straining and then everybody else is is extra ear candy and they're um hey don't lose track of the story we're going to keep you interested as we're going along here but you need to focus on what this guy's saying and what the chord structure of the song is and you know, uh, chords tell a story too. Every every voicing of a chord, everybody knows. Like every voicing of a chord tells an emotion, and you choose those voicings based on what the lyric is saying, and you make those match to each other to really push home the emotion of the song. As you're mixing, everything should be about that all the time. And I feel like some of the things inside of this mix are a little bit lost in terms of balance, um, a little bit in terms of like the spatiality of it, and then also just like chasing after sounds. Um, I think that like if you really focus on that vocal and make that thing speak and then ask yourself who's the main the main harmonic player and the chord structure and everything make that guy speak well and everybody else comes around it that's that's really going to be the important thing that helps to sell the song on this one uh there's a good story in the song and i love the song i think that you're doing a great job on it and it'll um you can definitely keep it going there i think uh your your instincts are right in the comments what you're going after to to work on some of the things um just make sure you're doing them tell the story and uh that it's going forward with it and uh uh, Mirko, if you put up another mix of this, please let me know in the next mix tank. Um, and I don't know, I don't think that we can tag each other on, on mix tank here, but uh, again, mark at puremix.net if you want to send me a link um, to your next submission of the song. Hope it helps. Let me know if you have questions. Okay, uh, let's see here. Let me find our next person. Uh, profile VR mail. So maybe let's get to that one. Guys, if I've missed you, if I've gone past your uh, comment in the chat, uh, let me know. 
We're going to go till about 4.30 today. I want to try and get to as many as possible. So I might spot check this one because it's almost five minutes long. So here we go. Voilà probablement le journal d'un mort. Radio si sec. Voilà les essais. Sa nature et sa vie. Les relents injoignables. Je redirige, j'oriente mon déclin J'orientais ma chute vers un endroit moins sec Tout hasardeux maintenant Que mon corps, ma chair, mon reste absent Que puisse servir un beau dessin Peignez-moi d'or, passe ta main dans mes cheveux Je suis absent, peignez-moi mort Just comment as I go here. Um, watch out for lip smack mouth noises on the uh, the voiceover vocal here. Isotope uh, mouth declick again. I'll always sing that thing's praises. It helps a lot. And then, um, yeah, let's go from there. C'était un soir sous l'emprise de la ketamine. La lune buvait l'espace noir sans chasser les étoiles. Il ne manque rien, tout se déroule. Nous n'avons pas à y revenir. Simplement, la lune buvait l'espace noir. Et à grandes enjambées, nous filions vers nos divines maisons. Il n'existe plus rien de cela. Le bel arrêt est tellement furtif. Oui, peut-être, une chose me dit, je crois qu'il y eut des ciels mauves et des souffles violets. La vie était... Probablement déjà à terme. Yeah, so uh, right here, this is a good example of um, mouth noises pulling me out of the story. Now, I believe that this is in French and I don't speak French, so um, I don't know what you're saying and if that provides context or not. Uh, but here's the mouth noise I heard. Probablement déjà à terme. Une chose me dit. It'd be very easy to edit that out if it doesn't help the story. Il y a eu des états splendides. Aujourd'hui, les étoiles sont en jeu. Et demain, nous serons sains. En bribes éparses et à front. There's uh, some 600 build-up in the um, arpeggiated synth sequence that's happening that has separated the vocal from the uh, music for me a little bit. So the music is much darker than the vocal is. The vocal has great diction and it's very present, but um, it feels present in the way to me that it, like a voiceover inside of a movie with a movie soundtrack would be happening. I don't know if they should feel more connected or not. Again, like I can't, um, I don't know what the, the lyrics are to try and like develop the, the overall, you know, overall aesthetic for the song but uh, that's a uh, thought I had just now. existence sous peser simplement siéger les carrés aux limites des involtes l'état délimité se consume nous tournons maquillage hirsute ralentissent nos éperons la confusion adjointe à l'homme la confusion de la vie confusion des images nous sommes je dirais borderline l'exigence m'élimine ma connerie m'élimine I think I heard a mic handling noise right here. L'exigence m'élimine, ma connerie m'élimine. Les viscérats de mes nerfs, toutes ces corrélations sont à demi cotérisées. Mon avancée se produit sans lumière. J'ai cru que la terre grondait et se tenait au bord d'éclater. J'imaginais un tas de choses. Océan avalisé, montagne recrutée. Parapente démodée, Super 8 oublié, téléphone égaré, répertoire animé, en jeux animaliers, consommation triplée. Je consomme beaucoup. Je dois consommer mon. Je vais consommer mon. Je consomme mon. Le 2-08-2013, il est 8h, ma tête boue. Je me laisse aller dans la mort. 
Cool. Uh, so during that build, I wanted that kick to be a little bit brighter and, and come up and be a little punchier. And that made me focus on the mask that's happening in those synths as well. Um, if you have access to something like Pro Q3 or any EQ where you can solo a band and move it around, uh, what would happen in this one if you did this with Pro Q without boosting or cutting anything, if you just soloed a band and moved it around on the frequency spectrum, I would bring in the Q a little bit. And as you move it around, you would notice um, some resonances start to pop out in sections that are really, really built up. So if I did this in the low mids, I'd start like hearing all of that stuff pop out. And that would be a really great spot to look for just kind of making some room for to brighten this thing up. Um, overall, I feel like the the texture of the vocal needs to come a little bit closer to the music. The music feels a little muffled to me, could use some, you know a little bit of opening on the top. But I like the darkness of it and the texture of it along with that vocal in terms of like, if it was a voiceover in a movie soundtrack. So um, without knowing the context, it's a little hard, but uh, this is super cool. Let's just listen to the end really quick and see if uh, we hear anything else. N'arriveront que des fins, le fil tendu tiendra ou non, et alors la vie tient. Je n'ai plus besoin. If it's appropriate, I think even more of the effects that you're putting on once in a while on the vocal would be really cool with this just because of the ambient nature of it. Je vais me reposer. Comment l'accepter? Comment faire? Some phasey stuff happening here with the arpeggiated part. Je vais me reposer. Comment l'accepter? Comment faire? Pas mal de cacher, malgré yeah, in the motion sequence there. Yeah, I love all the synth sounds and everything that's in that. Um, I don't think I have too much else to add to it other than what I did without like knowing more about context and story and all that. Um, but yeah, this is super cool. I love the piece and I love this, uh, what you're doing with it. That had to be fun to make. Um, good luck with it and I hope that that helps. All right, let's see what we got here. Other people. Uh, yeah, thanks again for submitting that. That's super cool. Um, let's see. So that was VR Mail. Okay, what's up, Marcos? Good to see you in here. Uh, let's see. All right, guys, help me out. If you've submitted a song, go ahead and put it in the chat. Uh, otherwise, we'll draw one, but I'm pretty sure we got some other ones in here waiting. And let's, I think I hit all of these. Okay, if I've missed your song, let me know in the chat, and I'm going to pick a random one for now. Unless I see anything in the next second. Oh, I got one. Okay, here we go. This one's from Jose. Uh, nice. I think uh, Jose's been submitting a couple from this live performance recording that he did. And this is the fifth song from the concert. Live performance. Poor recording, he says. No overdubs. All right, let's see. Let's see where we're at. Um, and before I do that, if, I've, if I haven't gotten your song yet, you're in the live chat, please put your Pure Mix username and the name of the song, and we'll listen to it uh, right after this one. We're going to go till about 4.30 or thereafter. Here we go. Just gonna comment as I go here. This section right here, uh, listen to the level between the vocal and the trumpet. Ilumine, 
And I'm listening for the tonality of the vocal. I want to hear it before the trumpet comes in. Okay, so where I'm at with it right now is the the kick is a little big to me. Um, the bass is a little bit beefy. There's a lot of low mid in, uh, information happening, not a lot of presence. But things really kind of stood out to me when that trumpet came in because the trumpet's very present, um, has the most brightness up to this point, in my opinion, and uh, feels louder and more present than the vocal, which is in the center, who feels a little bit more recessed and muffled. Um, so we'll listen one more time to the vocal and the trumpet together. Here we go. So, yeah, as it's going, it's um, where does your ear want to go? Like, as soon as that trumpet comes in, I'm like, trumpet, you know, like the dog from Up or whatever. But uh, so just something to consider, maybe just automate the trumpet down. Um, you don't necessarily want to kill all the brightness on a trumpet. So that might cause you to look at the presence on everything else. Um, I think we've talked about some of this on some of the, the other live streams with other songs from this, but let's keep going. Uh, you know, I think I totally forgot on Smoking Fudos. I wanted to say something about headphones, and I think I'm I'm feeling the same thing here. Jose, uh, if you're still in the chat, can you let me know if you mix this on headphones? Here we go. So uh, out of everything in the mix, everything has the same tonal texture to me, which is a good thing. Um, it's a little dark, but uh, the trumpet being as present as it is really makes everybody else feel more dark. If that trumpet didn't feel as loud or bright to me and the vocal was up a little bit, um, I would say that most of that could be solved in mastering other than maybe a couple little balance things with the kick and the bass. Um, but yeah... Overall, this is in a very consistent spot, which is moldable, if you will. Um, so if you needed more presence out of it, it would be something that could be done in mastering too. But um, okay, looking for smoking. Let me know if you, or wait, not smoking. Sorry, Jose, let me know if you mix this in headphones. And let's keep going. The vocal's plenty loud right there, so um, maybe some automation is in order. And I'm going to skip over to the end here. Some hits from the bongos, congos are kind of just popping out of the mix a little bit, you know, because they have a very strong resonance. Um, sometimes those can kind of jut out of a mix. So you have to watch out with uh, compression and everything. Um, I've had to use dynamic EQ, uh, automated EQ, and multiband compression to control things like that from jumping out of the mix and escaping um, in the past. So just watch for that in your percussion. Uh, I think like overall automation stuff and then just watching out for that bright trumpet over there um, would put everybody in the same ballpark, which would be very moldable either on the stereo bus or in a mastering situation. Uh, some of the reverbs feel a little artificial to me, especially knowing that it's a live performance. I want to hear more natural sounding reverbs. And I think we've talked about this on the other streams too, uh, where... 
I want this to feel like a live recording. It feels like a live band playing, um, and I can tell it was live, so I want it to have a space around it. And uh, again, like things like Ocean Way and um, any of those room simulation plugins, uh, the ones from Mike Multimedia are awesome, anything, um, to just kind of put it in a similar space that's like a room and then make it feel a little bit more live. So let's just listen to the very end here. Here we go. Yeah, so that's kind of weird there at the end. Um, the... Everybody but the kick and the lead vocal went down. Yeah, I think some automation's in order for the end of that, just to keep things kind of balanced. Uh, and then I want to hear a crowd, but I don't know if you have, you know, maybe you don't have audience mics and stuff, so. Okay, um... Let's see what we got here next. Oh, welcome, Mike. Uh, NYC Mike, just tuning in. Um, you're very welcome for the comments. Okay, here we go. Uh, Grace from Gadgets. Little Moles. Uh, <laughs> nice. Okay, uh, Little Moles. Let's see what we got here. It's from little Moles. Here we go. This is BWM as a user. Let's see what we got. I love all the space on the keys in the, the uh, yeah, all the width stuff that's happening is really, really cool. Um, but the drums feel like they're being spread out too, and I want to hear them tight. Uh, since you say retro question mark on there, I would even love to hear the drums in mono. That would sound awesome on this. But yeah, all, you know, subjective and all that. So, okay, moving on. Uh, sorry, drums are too loud and the vocal is too quiet. I wanted to hear what the vocal was doing right in there. Feels like we're trying to tell a story, but everybody's trying to be heard at the same volume. Okay, here we go. And when I say that they're too quiet, um, they're too quiet for me to understand the story. How loud they belong is, again, up to you. Subjective. Ah, uh, but that's just it. Now there's all this shit piling up the noise. Actually, um, with the other elements entering in, uh, I do want to, I really would love to hear the drums in mono. And the kick drum is a little bit big in the sub region. Feels like it's escaping every once in a while on the hits. There might be, just be too much compression on the drums, making them too loud. Uh, but they feel like they could be dialed back and, and centered up and then brought down in volume so that everybody else gets to speak. If you listen to um, some of the other stuff in this style, a lot of times, like, the the drums are are almost way too quiet and you have things like the strings that are you know really loud and mono over on the left like you have them right now which i'm excited to hear more of here we go God had given us a shovel and a truck we could clean up after Actually, for a moment, I thought they were in mono. Sorry, I'm getting hung up on this. You said uh, in the chat, Grace, um, the person who submitted this says, uh, mono, you say? Um, yeah, uh, I'm thinking of like the old old school kind of feel, you know, where you would have like one overhead on the drums and all that. But moving on.
This is so cool. This is like a mix of, um, it's like a mix of Bowie and Motown to me. Like the way that, that a lot of it's put together. I love this. It's really, really good. Wow, this is awesome. So you said on here, this is my first stra- my first stab at strings after Christian Henson showed me on YouTube how to uh, voice the sections rather than holding down a bunch of triads. Uh, one, I would love to link to that video. Two, <laughs> um, I well done because uh, that's super cool. The yeah, it's it's beautiful. Um, I love everything that you've done in in here. The uh, I have like mixed notes about it, but I think like a really really cool exercise for this. Um, would be do a save as, uh, wipe out everything that's not important to the actual, you know, like you would have tracked it that way, if you will. Like there's a, a phaser kind of warbly thing going on with the vocal that I think is important to the vibe and all of that. I wouldn't get rid of all of that. But, um, and this could just be an exercise. It doesn't have to be a final mix or anything like that. But I would just pull all the faders down and back to what I was saying before about like, where does the song live? Who is it? Is it the vocal? Um, who's the vocal? Who's the harmonic content guy? Uh, there's that keyboard that you have going in there that has a lot of like movement on it right now. But if the song had to live without a, a rhythm section, for example, who puts that together? Get a balance of those elements and then start bringing in the drums underneath that, right? And then the bass underneath that. Um, this feels like the the way it's put together sounds like a production mix to me, if you will. So it's like or a tracking mix. Um, so like as you were working on the instruments, you were working on the strings and you had them loud or you were working on the drums and you had them loud and then you were working on the strings and then you had those loud too and they were competing and everybody's just up because it's where you're working on it at. Um, I think go back to the basics, put the vocal up, put in the next harmonic element to it, put in the next most harmonic element to it and then bring the rhythm section up into that. Um, and I think that this is an amazing song. This is really, really cool. And I want to hear the next version of it. Um, that's the bummer is I don't always get to hear the next version of these songs. And I hear some really killer ones. We talked one week on uh, that we need to make like a playlist of all the, the songs on Mixed Tank that like are just, you know, blowing everybody out of the water. And um, in terms of like, you know, just being amazed and hearing great music. And this is definitely one of those to me. I would love like to hear this progress. I hope that that's useful feedback. Um, and if you have any questions, let me know in the chat or email me, mark at puremix.net. Great song. Thanks for submitting that. That was fun. Man, it's so cool. Yeah, I really want to hear the next part of it. Okay. Moving on. Here we go. We got... Uh, give it up. Mousequake was submitted. Okay, let's check this out. Uh, this might be our last one for the day. If I missed anybody, and you were really hoping to to have your song reviewed today, and it's up there already, put it in the chat, and I'll look after we review this song, and then that'll probably be it for today. Uh, but here we go. Give it up. This is from Mousequake, who has. One of the coolest usernames ever. Here we go. Yeah. 
rising to the top, baby. No one moves me like it just not stop. I wanna get you. You're making entrance that moves a crowd. Twirling like you do. You're really getting down, baby. Never let your feet touch the ground. I wanna get Killer, man. Wow, what a freaking arrangement. Did you also produce this or play on it? Or uh, let us know, Mouse Quake. Is... Damn. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Uh, nice. Okay. I need to back up a hair and just take one more piece of it because I have a thought, but I want to hear a transition here. I just want to. Okay, overall texture-wise, um, sorry, let me preface this. Damn, again, uh, now that that's out of the way, let's go into the bridge section, and uh, I want to talk overall texture first. So whole song wide, there's a, a brightness and a shine on this that feels a little intense to me, so I don't know. It, um, you could even actually do that with sugar, like make it go too far on the on the shine part of it and have things just be a little bit too... Um, sparkly, if you will. Uh, it feels a little exhausting uh, on the top. So it might just be a hair too bright. Best way to, to get around this, um, pull up something in the vein, a mix that you love, and A-B while listening to the overall shape of the record. 
um, to some of your favorite references and just see where the top end is on your reference, see where your top end is. This feels like it's just escaping a little bit. Um, one thing, it, when you want to have a lot of shine like that, a great thing to do, um, you know, you've seen all kinds of things and there was a sticker on Pyramix for a while that said high pass everything. We know all kinds of things about cleaning up the bottom end. Um, but a less talked about thing is cleaning up the top end because who would want to take away top? We have converters that go to, you know, 192 K so that we can sample up to 48 or, you know, whatever 96. And yeah. Um, if you, the back CQ has a great low pass filter on it that it's very subtle, but when you start shaving some of that stuff off, there's a sensation like you go back. Um, actually, Nick Hard in the recent Snarky Puppy video had a good good uh, tip for dialing in a low pass filter on a on a mix bus, and that's kind of like moving it down until you start to hear the the tonality of the instruments change. So if you bring it down and the hi hat starts, you start hearing like the tone of the hi hat change or whatever. Too far, probably unless you like it, but I would try just like shaving off above 20 kilohertz or above even 18. And just seeing if it's um, a little bit more pleasing on the ear. And a lot of times, uh, I've talked about this with low end, like when we do a high pass, if you think about how a speaker works, it it has to move um, so many times per second to produce a frequency, right? And when it does a 60 hertz frequency, the, the depth that the speaker has to travel is much further than when it has to do like 200. And it has to move quickly, but even faster at a, at a more shallow depth. So same thing is true for tweeters. Um, if you don't have to produce things that are above a certain range and move, you know, ultra light speed fast, um, if you make the speakers stop trying to reproduce that, it's going to be more efficient at the other things. So uh, our converters also don't have to work as hard. There's there's a whole bunch of reasons for doing low pass stuff. Um, but yeah, anyway, I would I would try that out because there's just a little bit something on top of it that's um, kind of pinging my ear. Uh, it's just a little bit bright. Um, that's the overall texture thing. I think the next biggest thing um, to me was like scene changes, just giving this a little bit of variation from section to section. So um, yeah, referring to it as a scene change. So like think about in a movie, you move from one act to another. Um, same idea in song production too. Like as we go into the bridge, what could happen that separates it sonically from the rest of the song? As we move in here, the the uh, next thing I'm going to comment on is the, I believe it's a road sound that's kind of doing a lot of panning around. So let's just listen to the transition from chorus into bridge and then out of the bridge here. Give it up. Let me get my all for you. Give it up. I want to. Give it up. So two comments about that. One on the production side, the Rhodes is the guy who's giving us the harmonic structure and the instrumentation there. That's where the chords are coming from. And the pan man effect of it kind of moving around, um, to me, I need it to be that foundation thing. And it's moving so much that it's distracting my ear. And it almost sounds more empty because I don't have that in a more solid way. So I wonder if reducing the width of the pan man effect or the depth of it um, would would add some solidity to that. That is a subjective thing. If you love what it's doing, obviously, you know, uh, that wins. But um, the only other thing is on the run in the roads there, I kind of wanted to hear somebody else do it with it and like beef that up on that moment. But that's a production thing. Uh, more importantly, the uh, Pan Man effect goes through the entire song. What if it stopped on the bridge and there was something else happening there along with it? Uh, that would be a bit of a scene change. Like things would be a little bit different. Same with the drum tones. Um, the groove of the pattern, all that stuff. Like, what can we do to separate each section and build momentum as we go from um, scene to scene in our story? So uh, that was my other thought on it. And then there's some stuff in the drums. I just need to listen one more second. Give it up. Oh, baby. Give it up. Let me give it all to you. Give it up. I want to give my heart to you. Give it up. Let me give my all for you. Give it up. I want it. Baby. Give it up. Um, I feel like the kick is a little soft. Uh, it's it's a longer kick, which I think is fine. I think everything's moving fine in the groove, obviously, because I can't stop moving when I'm playing it. But um, I would like a little bit more transient on it somehow. Uh, parallel compression, that 160 trick works really well. Um, and then the clap, I felt, was a little bit bright or harsh. And 
I think it's harsh in the same way of that like overall texture thing that I feel. So it could be that if you do anything to clean it up on a global level, that would take care of the clap thing too. But I almost, at the beginning, I was almost wishing that there was like a snare there, but that's not the right vibe for the song either. And I think your production choice is awesome. Um, so I wonder if just reducing a little bit of like 4K in the clap would help it um, get a little bit more punch, a little bit more body. Uh, that's a way of adding body by taking away something else, right? Like we subtract up at 4K or something like that. It'll feel thicker overall. Um, but try that. You might not like it. Uh, and cool. Um, other than that, man, it's awesome. I think uh, I would just check into that, some of that stuff and, and see how you feel about it. Uh, I'd love to hear another version. Be back in two weeks, 2.30 p.m. Uh, if, you, if you do another one or uh, if you need more insight or any, um, more explanation of any of that, mark at uh, Okay. So uh, while we were going, uh, I saw Luca... I forgot a check from Luca from before. So this is Bambola Voodoo. Let's look for the check. Bambola Voodoo. There we go. Okay. This is from Luca. Um, let's check it out. Here we go. It says, my first song is a producer, mix, and master engineer. But I think I made a good job because I studied so much. I realized uh, my first artwork, awesome. Uh, I think this mix has a style, borrows nuance from different genres, and a solid landscape. Awesome. Cool, Luca. Let's check it out. Congrats on, on finishing it and all that. Here we go. I'm not 100% sure, but I think the bass is a little bit out of tune here. talking and you guys couldn't hear me i'm sorry so sorry okay i'm bringing up my little friend decibel we're going to talk about some loud stuff or some loudness stuff in a, in a moment here um sorry if that's a little bit choppy but we're gonna we're gonna go through it 
Uh, if you've heard the loudness talk too many times, I'm sorry. We'll go quickly. Here we go. Awesome. All right, cool. Sorry about the mic thing there, guys. Uh, Luca, awesome job, especially for your first song. I wish that my first song sounded this good. It did not at all. Okay. Um, so uh, first thing, let's talk about the comment on the screen here. I think the kick of the sustain or the sustain of the kick is too long. I think uh, the sustain of the kick is correct in some places. Um, so the kick drum, uh, and maybe you you tailored this very intentionally, but if you think about how long the kick is, um, it has a note value and it especially has a note value. Like there is a pitch to this kick drum and the sustain of that thing is like playing a bass note, right? So the kick in some spots is so long that it overlaps other kicks and then um, it doesn't necessarily assist the groove all of the time. Um, however, I wouldn't shorten it all that much either. Like it might be fun to go like short kick, short kick, long kick or something like that and like work that in your pattern. Um, if you like how it feels and, and if you play with the sustain of that kick drum and you feel like it's changing the groove too much, then you nailed it and don't touch it. Um, but all of those things are, are things to consider when you're putting a groove together is how long is the bass drum? And what, another thing like that we talk about on here a lot is when you start cranking up low end in like a kick or a bass, um, you can sometimes effectively change the note value that's happening. And this is something that if you go to any concert that has subwoofers with a, um, a less than stellar front of house engineer, they start pushing up a whole bunch of sub. They can actually extend the note value of like the bass player or um, the kick drum. And I think the bass player is a really good example of this. If you think about like a tight funk bass player if uh if you push a bunch of that bass into the subwoofers think about like when the bass player would mute the strings if you muted the strings and you had a whole bunch of low end in the subwoofer the the mute of that would have like a extended length to it and it would almost come out like a note value so um same thing with the kick if you put a whole bunch of subwoofer on a kick in a live setting you end up exciting the room and the low frequencies just don't die for a while and it's like you're you're changing the kick from like a you know like an eighth note or a 16th note into being like a quarter note or a half note even um so that's that's something to just kind of keep in mind when you're dialing in like samples the length of those samples how do they fit into the groove and the note that they're playing does it rub with the bass all of those things are very important um just uh just to kind of keep an eye on so a lot of your um the things that i'm hearing in the mix are related to the loudness of the track and that's why i pulled up my good friend decibel here um and he's over here hi decibel uh so the if the the number that you'll see on my screen right now is uh like minus six seven for that section that i played with it on there and um the red line that you see up uh you guys can't see my pointer but there's a red line above where it says um let me see above where it says integrated there's a red line that reads minus 14 a little small on your screen but uh that's about the level that spotify will play your track back at so what does all that mean um this is measuring lufs lufs is loudness units full scale and it's basically trying to tell you a reading for how loud your music is over time the um line on the bottom 
there's two lines around that ring. The line on the bottom is your your long term LUFS, so over the course of playback, and then the bigger top ring is your short term. To the right of that, the red stuff, uh, where it says 5.9 and it's all red, that's your dynamic range. Um, so on this track, it's six, uh, and your LUFS is minus 6.7. The minus 14 level, basically what will happen is Spotify will not change anything that you did with your mix, but they're just going to take a volume knob, and in this case, they're going to turn it down 7.3 dB so that it plays at the exact same level as everything else. But that's not going to increase your dynamic range. Your dynamic range is still going to be 6 dB. It's just going to be 7.3 dB lower than where it is right now. So basically, you would have had a whole lot more dynamic range available to you um, to have one thing louder than the other uh, and like punch and kick and transients and all of that stuff, which is all being kind of lopped off by your limiter. So you pushed everything to be really, really loud and we're biting down in the limiting stage and like lopping off transients and punchy stuff uh, all in the name of loudness and all that'll happen eventually anyway is it's gonna be turned down. So you end up missing all the good stuff. Um, so all of that to say that the limiter could be backed off, but in this particular case, I think this is my suspicion, I could be completely wrong if you try this and it works amazing, but if you back the input of that limiter off and you're, you're cutting off less in your mix, I think the balance is going to end up changing on you because uh, it would be so much higher. I think that there's so many things being lopped off that you're going to find like kick drums and snare drums are poking out that were being kind of smacked down by the limiter. And um, you had like the security guard of the limiter just like knocking everybody back. So I think that that's going to end up changing the mix a bit. Um, and uh, Luca, you you are definitely a pro member because you're able to submit a mix. So you have access to Decibel. If you go to uh, my account on Pure Mix and then to your plugins, uh, you'll you'll find a way to redeem that license in there. But this is from um, process.audio and, and all that. So you can log into process.audio with your Pure Mix login. You can download the meter and all that. Um, there's all kinds of different layouts you can do with this. But uh, the whole reason I pull it up, though, is to point out that this mix is very loud and it's hurting you to be so loud. Um, so... I would try pulling that limiter back and see what happens to the mix. Uh, the biggest point that it felt like a, a loudness problem to me was in the two voices. I felt like they were being mashed together and that there was um, some brightness happening to it. And I think that uh, if I think if I had pulled up decibel back when we did um, Gabby's song at the beginning of the the mixing session or the mix tank session, the live stream today, we would have found a similar thing. All of that compression is is kind of like pushing pushing down transients and and really kind of making things more brittle. You can't have loud and have amazing low end at the same time. It's kind of like ends up being this trade off. Some people are really good at it. It's not to say that it can't be done, but usually the first thing to go is the low end. And if I hit play here again, um, watch the spectrum analyzer and where the low end is at in comparison to the high end, and that's at this volume level. So let me go to a chorus and I'll hit play. Now, um, I should point out, like, every analyzer has a slope to it. It's not a flat, this is not a flat curve. There's a, you know, certain dB per octave slope on this spectrum analyzer. So it's, it's not the greatest example, but usually the first thing to go is low end when you start cranking things up. Um, so my first piece of advice, and probably my biggest one, is uh, take the limiter off or back the limiter off uh, and see where things lay. And uh, beyond that, all of the things that I heard happening from it was, um, you know, not having like a, a big sense of depth in the mix and the vocals being on top of each other and having some kind of like almost distortion qualities going to them. Um, keep an eye on your mix tank page here because you just submitted this three hours ago. I know Tom Foolery and probably Sonic Science Lab are going to have great comments on this as well as every other community member. Um, so keep an eye out for all that. Uh, but yeah, I think the biggest thing I would watch out for is just the loudness on there and then see where you're at. And then uh, going back to it, I would just see like from there, what are the elements that tell the story of the song and then bring everybody up around that. But um, that being said, I think this mix does have a style and I think that you're on a great track and I can't believe this is your first song and you're going to kill it. So um, yeah, just... You know, save uh, definitely do a save as. Keep the mix that you have, especially if you're feeling good about it. You know, keep watching the page for other comments and all that. But I think one of the best exercises that you could do um, is to say, like, 
what happens if I remove myself from the anxiety of like revision after revision of this mix and I take away the pressure of like having to create a final mix and I just do a mixing exercise the same way that musicians pick up their instruments and play scales or that Gabby does her vocal exercises or uh, whatever. Um, mixing engineers and engineers need to practice as well. So make your practice session, um, pulling everything off and then saying what matters in this song, bring up the first fader. Who supports that story? Bring up the next fader. Who helps tell that story? Bring up the next fader and start um, just just practicing overall balance and storytelling through mixing and volumes and how you present it. Uh, that's that's something that I try to do. Um, I try to do it every day. I'm not great about it every day. Uh, you know, it's like anything. It's like going to the gym. But um, yeah, I hope that that helps. And I think uh, I think you did a great job on this. Um, I agree. Uh, Isomatic said the guitar is poking out in the mix too much and it's clashing with the vocal. I agree. Um, but I think like to start off with any, any other comments I would give, my first one is um, back the limiter off. And as soon as you do that, uh, this entire balance that I hear is going to change. And then most of my comments would be null and void. So I think just start there and then, you know, play with the balancing. So cool. Uh, thank you everybody for, um, yeah, uh, sorry, I just saw it. Um, Primetime said to check out the video from Luca Pertolesi on Pure Mix. Luca is a master of getting things loud as hell, and he's awesome at it, and things smack. So definitely check out Luca's stuff. Uh, cool. I think we did it, guys. I think we did it. So thank you, everybody, for submitting mixes. Thank you for tuning in. I'm going to be back next Monday for another episode of The Great Big Plugin Show. And rumor has it that we're going to be doing a company that uh rhymes with ladle is <laughs> it rhymes with ladle so it's not ladle uh but uh yeah the plugin's gonna be from there there will probably be an announcement about what the plugin is pretty soon and keep an eye out thank you again for submitting thank you for tuning in i appreciate you guys so much um thank you everybody who shows up week after week as well uh and mostly everybody who submitted mixes uh it's it's not easy to put your work out there, um, but this is all in the name of us studying and getting progressively better. Chat room, you're on fire today. Thank you so much for helping out with comments. If you had your song on here, please be sure to check the chat. Watch out for the chat in the box above me too. Everybody that's a community member had great feedback today as well. Um, and keep an eye on your songs on Mixtank for further, further feedback from the community. Um, appreciate everybody. Thank you so much. Keep an eye out for uh, the Black Friday sale. And uh, the new Michael Brower chapter is out now. If you were wondering how to calibrate that template, go check it out. New chapter available. And it's just in the same video page that it was before. Spice Rack now available. If you guys are pro members, you have access to all the plugins, decibel that I just showed, all that stuff. So we'll see you next time. Have a great Thanksgiving for all those who are uh, doing Turkey Day. All right, bye.